Good afternoon. Glad to see everybody this afternoon. My name is Stacy Walter. I am the marketing and communications manager here at Herman Pro AV. And I am very excited this afternoon to welcome Brian Morris, who is the business development and sales engineer. He's going to be talking to us today about um, feeling together again, which I think we all would to feel a little bit part of our, our teams these days and talk to us about how the Bose Video Bar VB1 can help us do that. So I just want to let everyone know there is a sec there's a Q&A section. If you want to pop up and ask a question as we go along, that's fine. You can raise your hand and I will unmute you. Um, if you have a question uh, as you go along, we will also save some time at the end for a little Q&A if you'd rather wait. Uh, I will remind you that we do do a survey at the end, so um, you should either receive it in your email or it'll pop up for you, and we'd appreciate your feedback on that just so we can continue to make improvements as we move forward with our webinars. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Brian and let him uh, get us started. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited about what we have to, to show. Uh, I am, as Stacy mentioned, Brian Morris from Bose. Uh, I work for the Bose Professional Division, and specifically within Bose Professional, uh, I work for Bose Work, which is focused purely on conferencing spaces. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Bose over the, the decades that we've been around. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with Bose Professional, which has actually been around for, for nearly 50 years now, uh, that you know we focus in Bose Pro on all installed audio applications, um, mainly for commercial applications. So for, for corporate, for hospitality, uh, live event venues, things like that. And then a couple of years ago, we branched out into be uh, deeper into conferencing with the Bose work line. And that focuses purely on conferencing spaces, whether it be video conferencing and or audio conferencing as well. So what we're gonna focus on today is one, uh, one item within the Bose work line, which is the video bar VB1, which is a, as you could imagine, a very hot commodity nowadays, uh, being that everybody is uh, doing something virtually with somebody else um, in whether it's the workspace or even in, in personal spaces now. So with that being said, let's dive right in and take a look at, you know, what does the future of conferencing look like? Uh, I think we can all see how much things have changed over the last two years or so. Um, that you know, there is this new advent of spaces that are popping up in businesses that weren't meeting spaces traditionally. Uh, we're also seeing a trend of large meeting spaces are starting to be put on the back burner. So smaller, more intimate, uh, easy to use spaces are, um, are popped up and you know, installed more and more frequently. Uh, you know, we've seen a, a huge increase in huddle spaces over the last several years. This is definitely uh, in the same realm as that. Uh, but we're seeing, you know, rooms that historically maybe only had a conference phone, a speaker phone in the room, are now being outfitted with some type of video support, whether it be a bring your own device system for video conferencing with a uh, camera peripheral, kind of like what the VB1 is, uh, or full on conferencing systems as well. But uh, either way, being outfitted with some type of video where historically there were maybe just a speakerphone in a room. Uh, but also, you know, one of the main focuses here is the flexibility in supporting outside users, individual outside users. It's not just calling office to office anymore. It's calling office to anybody else that could be in the field. More and more people work from home. There's more uh, hybrid applications where some people work in the office, some people work at home. Some people are just in the car or traveling. Uh, we need to be able to support and include all of these different uh, employees and types of employees uh, around no matter what company they work for. So a little bit about uh, Bose and Bose work. Uh, you know, I kind of alluded to, you know, what we're trying to do is take every experience that you're used to, whether you're a mobile user walking through an airport in a noisy environment or somebody sitting at a desk uh, in an office or at the kitchen table with your laptop and uh, there's new everyday life going on, no matter what situation you're in for work, we want to be able to include 
you and keep that experience basically the same across the board. Now, Bose in general, I'm sure you're familiar with Bose as a brand. Uh, Bose has been around for a very long time now and is very known in the uh, higher end consumer electronics space, uh, known for simplicity and quality in, in audio products mostly. Um, we are actually on the list of top 10 brands in the US, the trusted brands in the US. So um, pretty, pretty big deal for us. We've been around for a very long time. We have a very, very cool story uh, created by Dr. Bose a long time ago and um, still privately held company that is an absolute uh, dream to work for and, and work with. Uh, values always come first. And, you know, we make sure when we're building a product, we build a product that is going to be complete, ready to go, very well thought through before it's brought out to the market. So within Bo's work, we break it down into three main categories. One of these categories we're going to talk about today, but we do have the others and I want to make sure that you're aware of them. Uh, if you break this up as a pyramid, the very top of the pyramid is the smallest part. Uh, which is our integrated meeting spaces, you know, large conference rooms, executive board rooms, training rooms, any kind of a large installed audio application. Uh, this is where racks of equipment, uh, audio amplifiers, audio DSPs, installed speakers, installed microphones, things like that uh, would come into play. We have all of those devices to handle the audio portion of that and have partnerships with the right other manufacturers for things like installed microphones and, and things like that. Uh, the middle of the pyramid is where we're gonna kind of hover around today. It's kind of the sweet spot. Uh, that's where you see a lot more huddle spaces, small conference rooms, medium-sized conference rooms, uh, simple, what you might call a hang and bang type system, hang a TV, give yourself a conferencing system, make it easy to use and you know make it a familiar experience for the users and knock out several of those in one, you know, one fell swoop. And then the bottom of the pyramid, which is the largest, just on sheer volume, is the personal users, the mobile users, users that are in the car or in the airport or in a coffee shop working or working remotely from their home where maybe it's a noisy environment. The dog is barking in the background. The UPS driver is, is ringing the doorbell, things like that. Uh, you know, those are environments that, you know, tend to kind of bring some complexities that you wouldn't have in an office space. So, Things like personal devices like headphones, noise canceling headphones, uh, conferencing headphones would uh, would be a, a very nice fit for those users. Also in office spaces and cubicles and, and things like that as well, of course. But let's go back to the middle of that pyramid. So the Bose Video Bar VB1, this is our first uh, device that includes a camera with uh, conferencing capabilities. It is a sound bar that definitely looks like a Bose soundbar. It's sleek, it's streamlined, the microphones in it are absolutely incredible, the speakers in it are exactly what you would expect from Bose. It's a small slim trim form factor that fits into just about any application and it has a really nice 4k camera. Uh, so what this fits into is any conferencing space from a huddle space or a little meeting nook up to a medium or even medium to large size conference room. Uh, where this differentiates itself versus some of the others out there as all-in-one bars is that we have six mics built in with four active dynamic beams that I'm gonna show you some of this uh, in a little bit and what some of those beams look like and what that actually means. Uh, so we can pick up the voices in the room and not the extra noise maybe you don't want to hear the tapping on the table, the shuffling of papers, the, you know, knocking at the door or people off in the distance kind of making some noise. Focus on the things that you want to hear in the room and get rid of the things that you don't want to hear in the room. Uh, the speakers in it give you the playback that you would want from a soundbar in a room. So you can use it as your legitimate playback device within a room. It's not just optimized for voices. There's actually some bass response. So if you wanted to play music through it, you can play music through it. If you wanted to play videos on the screen in the room and have the audio come through this bar, you can absolutely do that and be very happy with the performance that you're getting out of such a small form factor. Uh, one thing also that we'll talk about is the single cable connectivity. So with this, you can install it underneath the display, above a display, on a credenza, uh, wall mounted or sitting on a tripod, a lot of different ways that you can install this or keep mobile on something like a cart. 
and install one single USB cable to the table or to a wall plate or to where you might install for a user to plug in his or her laptop and create a call. So drive a, a conference call from the device that people are comfortable and familiar with, just like you do from your desk. Historically, for an application like this, you would have to have two cables installed in the table. One would be for HDMI to be able to present to the display, and one would be USB to get the USB peripherals like the camera, the mic, the speakers, and, and that. We're using DisplayLink built in to enable the use of a single USB cable, use uh, standard drivers from the computer to go video, audio, camera, mic, speakers, the whole, the whole deal on that single USB-C connection. There's also remote management capabilities. So you can put this on the network, whether it's wired or wireless and manage it remotely. You can deploy units uh, remotely. If you have hundred units you wanna go and deploy, use the Bose Work Management application to go and push configurations out to all of them from one desktop without having to go one-to-one -one for every unit that you're going to wanna to deploy. Same thing for updates. You can schedule uh, system updates uh, for maybe overnight hours when nobody's gonna be using the systems, things like that. So taking a look at some of these, you know, kind of me medium-sized rooms, kind of the sweet spot for where the VV1 would go. This is what a traditional uh, conferencing bar system would look like, where you have the conferencing bar installed underneath the display on the wall, cables installed to the tables, probably going through, you know, through the wall, through the floor core, and then up to the table. And at the table in a lot of other applications outside of the VV1, you're required to install dedicated mics that are going to sit on the table, mic pucks or pods, if you will, sitting at the table. The problem with those is that they're very directional. You have to be close to them for them to really work the right way in the room. And, you know, you can imagine you walk into a room, you have a notebook, maybe you have a laptop, you have a cup of coffee. All of that stuff has to be put down on the table. That stuff in a lot of cases gets put down directly on the microphone or next to the mic where there's a lot of shuffling and there's a lot of noise. Uh, if people are turned around backwards because those mics are so directional, they don't really pick up very well. Uh, they're not quite as dynamic as maybe you would want them to be. And then really the other thing is it just drives the complexity of buying and installing the system through the roof, where what was a simple application to hang a bar from a display is now a full-on integration project with uh, needing to run multiple cables and extenders and things out to the tables and then have clutter at the tables with the mics. Well, with the VB1, you can simply hang the VB1 from the display or above the display if, if that's the preference to be you know, up higher and use the mics that are built in. You can be 20 feet away from the mics in the VB1 and still be heard crystal clear on the far end of a call. Where the other way, you can maybe get 15 feet away and you still need to have those mic pods at the table, which really kind of limits you to where you can put a, a, a solution like that in certain rooms. So we're able to get 20, 25 feet away from the VV1 with no problem. We have four active dynamic beams that are always looking for people's voices. So we're not just looking for noise, we're looking for voices specifically. And there's six mics four of those are active beams. So we have the ability to cancel out some of that extra noise that you just don't want to hear. Uh, these beams can be dynamic. They are dynamic out of the box, but you can also set them up to be static. So they're focused on specific seats at a table, which we'll talk about here in just a second. This is a great uh, example here. These rooms are popping up more and more frequently or rooms that are similar to this where it's not necessarily four walls and a ceiling. Uh, it's kind of an open area. This is a meeting booth type application where you have people sitting at the table, but a congregation area outside of that room where people tend to be, you know, walking past or noisy. So in that application, we can make those beams static, focus on the chairs in the room, and anywhere outside of those beams, the mics aren't going to search. You can also be extra safe and create exclusion zones, which I'll show you in the software here in, in just a couple of minutes, to make sure that the mics never search in areas that tend to be super noisy. And that can drop that noise level down by up to 30 dB, which is a massive, massive difference. So, you know, you get the coffee bar on the side of the room that people can kind of congregate in. It's distracting for people on the far end of the call. You can create an exclusion zone there for audio where 
the people on the far end won't hear what's going on on that portion of the room or that section of the room. So kind of an x-ray view of what the VB1 looks like uh, internally. So looking through the grill, you can see that the speakers that we have in are proprietary uh, racetrack style drivers. So you can imagine this video bar is 1.9 inches tall. I'll show you a little diagram and a little bit of, of the dimensions, but just under two inches tall. That's really, really small. If we went with traditional drivers, traditional speakers, they would be round, which means they would be very small and there would be very little surface area. So the wider we can get it, the larger we can get the surface area, the more bass response we're going to have, the better audio playback we're going to have. So we put in the biggest drivers we can possibly put in a really small form factor to pack a whole lot of punch in a small little form factor. It's kind of what Bose is known for. And there you can also see the six, the six mic uh, beam forming array. Uh, and, you know, just kind of typical Bose here. We are a research and development company first, manufacturer second, if you will. So what we do is we create things that are it's just built the right way. The speakers are uh, angled in the, the correct way to make sure they're pointed toward the audience, uh, not where, you know, you don't want them to be. Hey, Stacy, did we want to stop for a question? Yeah, we have a question. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, when were you certified for Microsoft Teams function? And is there an accessory audio mic available? Uh, so we have been Microsoft Teams certified for a year or so now. We're also Zoom certified. Uh, and Google is in the works as well. But whether we're certified or not, so we are certified with Teams and Zoom. Uh, whether we're certified or not for the other platforms, we are tested and proven to work with basically all the platforms that are out there, whether it be Google or WebEx or GoToMeeting or BlueJeans or, you know, whatever the dozens of platforms are out there. So been certified for, for a good little bit. There is actually not a microphone accessory for this. And honestly, it's for good reason. What you see is what you get. You buy one part number. This is going to do it for lots of different rooms. If you needed something larger, we would go up to one of the larger, more integrated systems uh, that would be engineered for the specific size of the space. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the camera here real quick, which draws a whole lot of questions as you probably have. So it is a super wide field of view camera. It's 123 degrees diagonally. Uh, and it will pick up basically anybody within the room. So here I'm within arm's reach of a VB1 here at my desk. Obviously this is a home office, so it's, uh, it's not really designed to be in a, a space like this, but I'm sitting very close. It's a comfortable distance away, uh, probably sitting closer than most people would. Uh, you can see, we'll, we'll do a little bit of a demo in a little bit on what the Zoom looks like and, and the capabilities there. As far as Zoom goes and camera, you know, uh, pan tilt Zoom, uh, things like that, we have auto framing built in as an option. You don't have to use auto framing if you don't want, but it's there as a capability for you. Where the intelligence of the camera is looking for a combination of a face and a body. So we're looking for people to automatically frame the camera to the people that are in the room. So what we're trying to do is if you start a call, or a meeting with one person in the room, the camera will automatically adjust and zoom to be the, the correct framing for that one person within the room. If two or three or four or six people join the room, the camera is gonna zoom out after a couple of seconds, reframe to the right size audience. And what we do with that is we cut down on the distraction that people see on the far end, where there's not a lot of movement and constant motion of the camera panning to one person or another, or really trying to adjust as people lean in their seats and things like that. But we always get the people in the room in the shot, which makes the people on the far end of the call feel included. Uh, that's what we're really going for. You can see the guy on the side rolling his eyes when somebody on the other side says something. You know, things like that where you would miss out if you weren't in the room. We want everybody to have that same experience. Uh, it's also important to note that the auto framing doesn't use the microphones at all. It's just based on the camera. So if you have somebody noisy outside the room that, you know, the, the microphones hear that person, the camera is not going to think that person is in the room and not going to reframe to try to get where that noise is. So we're purely focused on faces and bodies within the room, 
Um, also preventing things like, uh, you know, a round clock on the wall or, you know, an oblong shaped clock that maybe resembles a face. Uh, we're not looking for that. We're looking for the combination of both, which, you know, trying to be as, as smart as we possibly can. Of course, you still have all the typical pan tilt zoom capabilities. It comes with a remote control, which we'll uh, kind of demonstrate in a little bit. So if you want to have presets for a wide shot, a narrow shot, a whiteboard shot, not a problem at all. Uh, you know, you can have a whiteboard on the side of the room or in the back of the room, and you can read the text on the whiteboard from, you know, far distances away. So I mentioned the dimensions a little bit before. It is just shy of two inches tall, 27 inches long, so just over two feet long, and only it's, it's under four inches deep. So it's ADA compliant. The connections in the back are recessed, so you can bump this basically all the way against the wall if you need to. Uh, super easy to mount and, uh, and looks the part. There's no extra bumps or you know, uh, notches or anything on here that are gonna get in the way of installing it flush against the bottom or the top of a display, which seems like a little thing, but aesthetics are a major part of the spaces that we're going into every single day. The, the more clean, the more elegant you can make a design, the better it is for everybody involved. So speaking of the back panel, this is the recessed uh, connections in the back. So going from left to right, you can kind of see an x-ray view of the brackets that would mount to a, a wall mount bracket or the display bracket. You've got a wired network connection. There's wireless built in as well, Wi-Fi for, for management. So both of those connections, you can use either or both of those, or you can disable them if you'd like. Uh, you can manage that with um, the Bose Work Management application. You can use a third-party control system or third-party management uh, platform as well if you needed to manage these remotely, whether it be through SNMP or through a dedicated API to be able to control these. So if you wanted to control them from a control system, you have that capability. If you want to man uh, monitor them from you know, a remote management system, you can do that as well. A dedicated power connection with a dedicated power supply that comes with the device. Uh, still find it crazy that I, I feel that I have to mention that, but Yes, power supply comes with it. Uh, you don't have to rely on a special USB, anything for USB power. If you're using a USB extender, no problem with the amount of power that that USB extender is providing. So uh, anybody on the integration side of things would probably uh, understand kind of where I'm going with, with some of that. So nice dedicated power supply. It's a line lump power supply. So you know, easy to, to plug in. It's not a wall wart that's gonna take up a lot of room or anything. There is a dedicated audio input as well, which some people actually kind of take this for granted. There's a lot of conferencing bars that are out there that don't have an audio input, which immediately rules them out as being a sound bar. First thing I would call one of these is a sound bar or a camera sound bar or a video sound bar, but sound bar nonetheless, because there's speakers built in. So there's an audio input here that if you had a cable box in the room, or a media player, an Apple TV, or it was a smart TV and you're running the applications on the TV, you can run that audio from the TV directly into this and use this as the speaker solution within the room, not just with the USB connection for conferencing. Uh, so that capability is there. It has a control port as well if you wanted to interface it with a paging system for uh, paging overrides, alarm system goes off, mute the audio so, you, so people in the room can hear the alarm versus what's playing on the speakers. USB port, that's the magic port to make it all work. That connects to the computer, whether it be a dedicated computer or a Microsoft Teams room computer or a Zoom room computer or a laptop, doesn't matter. That's the connection that you're gonna use for a computer. And then the HDMI over tucked on the right side, that is to be used with display link. So I mentioned a little bit earlier that you have single USB connectivity where you can run HDMI from this directly to the display in the room single USB cable to a computer. And from that computer, you can output video, audio, USB peripherals, all on that single USB cable. So it cuts down on the clutter and the complexity of uh, you know, the connections that you have within the room. You don't have to use that display link. Uh, here's a, actually a nice example of uh, two use cases. So laptop connection for more of a bring your own device setup, USB from the laptop to the VB1, VB1 HDMI to the display. Super clean, one cable at the table. If you're using a dedicated computer or like a Microsoft Teams room or a Zoom room, uh, you would have that computer. A lot of times they have a dedicated touch panel for one touch dialing. 
USB from the VB1 to the computer, computer video out to the display. Pretty straightforward, two different applications. There's uh, several other ways that you can do this with dedicated computers mounted behind the display and things like that as well. Uh, long story short, we try to be as agnostic as possible. So we support all the platforms. We don't care what operating system you're gonna use. We don't care where you're gonna install your devices. We're just a USB peripheral that uses standard plug and play USB drivers. So you can take this out of the box, plug it in and it's gonna work in whatever application you want it to work in. A nice feather in the cap is the Bluetooth connection as well. So, you know, as I mentioned, this is a soundbar. So if you wanted to pair a mobile device uh, for either control of this using the mobile app, you could do that or audio playback or use it as a, a speakerphone for conference calls. Uh, it has that Bluetooth capability. It's a hard button on the side of the unit that you can press for pairing. Uh, same thing with the remote. You can press the Bluetooth button on the remote and pair. You can also turn off Bluetooth if you want to turn it off because maybe you get people that come in the room and are streaming things that are maybe inappropriate for, for what the audience is. Uh, one of my favorite things in this that is a very little known feature is the Bluetooth connection can actually be bridged with the UC connection. So if you're on a Teams call or a Zoom call using the VB1 in the room, and you have somebody that just can't join that conference call that you still want to be part of the conversation, you can call them from your cell phone, connect your cell phone Bluetooth to the VB1, just like a, any speakerphone, and the VB1 will bridge that Bluetooth connection with the USB connection. So the person that's maybe driving in their car on a cell phone is on the same exact call as people on their computers on the far end through Teams or, or Zoom bridged together. It's a fantastic feature that gives you a lot of capabilities. You know, we've all been in meeting rooms where you have to call somebody in. So you call them on your cell phone, you put the phone on speaker, you lay it on the table and everybody hovers around the speakerphone yelling, uh, you know, trying to get everybody to hear everybody else. And we've all been there. It's not a fun experience. So having that capability is, is really, really nice. As far as software applications go, there's a couple of uh, very streamlined, powerful uh, software tools that you have to access. So one is the mobile app. The mobile app essentially emulates the remote control that comes with the VB1. Uh, so if you wanted to do your basic camera controls, volume, uh, Bluetooth pairing, things like that, do it all from the mobile app with no, no issue. You have the Bose work configuration software as well, uh, which is, I should, I should mention all of these are free. There's no cost or subscription to any of them. The configuration software is really powerful. I'm going to show you an overview of it here in just a couple of minutes, just so you can get an idea of some of the, the capabilities that you have with the bar. And then the Bose work management software is the after the fact or the deploying software, if you will. Uh, you can create one configuration file and push it across all of your different units over the network. So if you have just kind of a base level of configuration where all devices are getting connected to this network and Bluetooth is going to be turned off and uh, display link is going to be turned on and whatever settings you might have, basic video settings, audio settings, uh, you can push that across uh, your network to as many devices as you want using the management software. Uh, we have a raised hand. Uh, yeah, so we have a question. Uh, can we connect a wireless subwoofer? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and unfortunately, the answer is no. So this is outside of the ecosystem of the other uh, Bose soundbars. So like the soundbar 300, 500, 700, there's no external subwoofer for this at this time. Um, so that's, yeah, a little unfortunate. It is going into smaller applications in most cases. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, we had one more question about, does it have a touch panel? It does not have a touch panel. If you want to use a touch panel, we have partnerships with the manufacturers that have those. So like HP, maybe you want to put an HP Elite Slice room kit in, which you know a, a Teams kit or a Zoom kit, that would have the touch panel. Um, or you know the plethora of other partners out there as well. We aren't trying to be the touch screen. We're not trying to be the computer. We're trying to be a really solid USB peripheral that's gonna work with all of those things. So whether you buy a Lenovo kit or an HP kit, or heck, even go with a Crestron kit and put this bar in, 
Um, sky's the limit with what you're going to use, knowing that this is certified to work with the software that's going to run on, on the, the packages that you're going to choose. All right, we had one other question. Is auto framing the same as auto tracking? I love that question. I'm so glad somebody asked that. So no, it is not the same as auto tracking. Uh, so auto, I explained auto framing before where we're trying to get the group of people in the room, the group of participants in the shot at any given time. Auto tracking is more for following a presenter. If a conversation is bouncing back and forth between people, a camera would track where, you know, where the conversation is going. As somebody speaks, the, you know, the camera would jump between users. We purposely went with auto framing because I don't know if you've been on the receiving end of an auto tracking camera, but it can tend to be very dizzying, disorienting, even motion sickness uh, for some people, just because it's constantly moving and flipping to different people. Um, so we do auto framing, we don't do auto tracking. Um, and basically, you know, based on, on design. The auto framing is really good in this. Uh, it's very smart about getting the right people in without being a distraction to people on the call. Any other questions yet? That has this for now. Okay, all right. Uh, that will do it for this part of it. What I do want to show you now is the actual video bar and the software a little bit. So I am using one here in my home office. Thankfully, my sleeping dog on the floor hasn't made too much noise for us yet, but the call is young, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. So here I'm going to get rid of my slides and pull up the Bose Work uh, configuration software. So give me one second. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. All righty, so let's share the screen again. I'm gonna stop my video in Zoom because sometimes the computer doesn't like to share the camera to two places at once. So here on the screen, you can see the Bose Work Configuration application. So I'm working with a Mac. This works on a Mac or a Windows PC. This is the application that you would use to generally to set up the VB1 tweak it, adjust it, really uh, really make it exactly what it should be for the space that it's gonna be put into. You know, no two spaces are created equally. So we give you the ability to really kind of dictate exactly how you want it to be, adjust the color in the video and, and everything. So at first glance, you can see you get a preview for video, all the typical PTZ controls for the camera. So up, down, left, right, zoom volume and all that. As soon as you sign into the software, you get the keys to the kingdom here. And here you see some you know, basic connectivity uh, statuses, things like that. What version are you using? Uh, you can update your firmware. It will tell you if you have a different uh, version available to update to. You can turn on and off just about every capability within the VB1. So if you don't want to use display link, you can turn it off. If you do want to use display link, you can turn it on. If you don't want to use auto framing because it tends to be a little cumbersome for some users, or you just, you want to dictate where the camera's going to be, uh, or you want to turn off Bluetooth or turn off the network connections due to security reasons, you can disable or enable anything that you want there. You can create and recall presets uh, or profiles, I should say. So a profile is just a saved configuration. This really comes in handy when you start deploying lots of units across a campus. So you can save a profile, go to Bose Work Management and upload that profile to every unit that you're gonna go and uh, install, which saves a ton of time. Basic system settings, uh, time servers, name devices for how it's gonna show up in the management software, things like that. Here's some camera settings. Uh, as you can see, this is really, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. So the camera, this is your pan, tilt, zoom settings. 
your presets. So you can save presets. I have some already preset on my unit. So the home preset is where the camera is going to go to upon connection every time. So if you want to make sure that you know, users go to the same shot, it's the head of the table or it's the wide shot for the table every time they plug in, save your home preset. That's where we're at right now. I also have a preset one. So when I go into standing mode with my desk, my desk raises up and I can stand and still have enough headroom as I'm standing. And then the super wide shot where you can see my dog having a good time down there on his own. Okay, so these are just three presets that you have. You can save them on the fly with the remote control. You can save them with the software. You can recall them with a control system if you wanted to as well. Uh, auto framing settings. So you can turn on and off auto framing. And then you can even adjust to really dial in the auto framing setting. So how much headroom do you want to give somebody? How fast or slow do you want the auto framing to you know, jump to a group of people? Or do you want it to be more slow and dramatic? Uh, things like that. And image. This is probably where you'll spend most of your time in Bosworth configuration, just adjusting the video to be exactly what you want it to be for, for the space that you're in. If you have a window behind where users sit, you can have some uh, backlight compensation. That's kind of like a quick preset to knock that down to focus on people in the foreground, adjust your brightness, your contrast, your saturation, your sharpness, all that kind of stuff as well. My favorite part of this software is the audio. So here I'm going to make this full screen and my camera is probably going to zoom out. So you can see the active beams here. So uh, there are four active beams, as you can tell, six mics built in, we, we mentioned before. So you can see that these beams are tracking as I speak. Now I'm the only thing or person making any noise in the office here. So the beams aren't really doing a whole lot because I'm just kind of sectioned off in this area. If we have multiple people here going back and forth, you're going to see those beams bouncing constantly back and forth. This is in dynamic mode. You also have exclusion zones that are pre-made that you can uh, increase or decrease the size of. So if you have a noisy doorway or you really just want to focus on right down the middle in front of the camera, you can create or uh, increase the size of these exclusion zones. And then you can also create your own custom exclusion zone. This is one of my favorite parts. If you have a noisy area in the room, maybe it's an open doorway right down the middle of the room in the back of the room, and you get people that walk past and it's really noisy for people on the far end of the call, create an exclusion zone and cancel out whatever that section is. So I'm gonna do that here and you'll see uh, what the difference is with an exclusion zone over top of me being the only person in this room. So there is an exclusion zone over top of me and my voice probably went down significantly and I got rid of it. So you, you probably heard my voice drop down pretty significantly there. Uh, it's a really powerful tool that you're not gonna use in every space, but you have the capability to use in whatever space you want for, for whatever reason. You can also set the beams to be static. So here we can set and position them where we want them to be. If I wanted to get rid of all the beams but one and just focus on the presenter, maybe you have a podium in the room and you wanted to uh, focus just on that podium, I can delete these other beams. So all we'll ever focus on is the podium in the room. Let me shift it back to dynamic here and jump back. You also have, let me get my camera back to normal, some uh, basic audio controls, turn off uh, AEC. If you wanted to use AEC based on the PC versus based at the video bar, you can uh, do that. Turning on and off bridge Bluetooth calls because maybe you do or don't want that capability. And then some basic meters for, for troubleshooting if you wanted to you know, really kind of dial in well, what's happening within your, your space. The last thing in here is the network. This is pretty straightforward. You've got wired uh, network connections. You've got wireless. And then you have some SNMP settings. You can enable or disable that if you'd like. SNMP is really used for management uh, remotely if you're using a third party uh, management platform or management software to manage devices. And that is it for Bose work configuration and the presentation. If there are any questions, I'll open it up now. Uh, Stacy, I'll let you be the moderator if there are any questions that came in. All right, so if anybody here has any questions, please just uh, raise your hand and I can unmute you or you can type something in the Q&A. Um, I'd be happy to 
to answer those questions as they pop up or in the chat, either one. Let's see. How is shipping on this, Brian? Ooh, that's a great thing. I, I, shame on me for not even mentioning that. These are in stock. They're in stock at uh, our warehouses. They're in stock with distribution. Uh, they are ready to go. And we did a really good job, thankfully, of uh, forecasting this as it's a, it's a fairly new product. So we're sitting very good with inventory for projects. So if you have a project that you want to use this on, it's available for shipping immediately. Uh, we also have registration programs and discounts. So if you have a project with multiple units, uh, get it registered, get some extra margin in there. The margin is good on it. There's definitely money to be made on the BB1, uh, but with the registration, it's even a little bit nicer. Just want to let everyone know that if you have questions or uh, want to get this on order, feel free to give your salesperson people here at um, Herman a call. We'll be happy to, um, uh, ah, we did get another question. Uh, do, do, uh, do dealers have demo units available? Yes, dealers do have demo units available. We also have demo units available. So uh, you can reach out to anybody on the Herman team. You can reach out directly to us here at Bo's. Uh, there are absolutely demo units available. We want you to be sure that it's the right product for your application. So if you need one to try out for a couple of weeks, uh, we can absolutely help out. The Herman folks can help out with that as well. All right. So again, I'm just going to share really quickly here. Um, the my, uh, my desktop, just to let you know that we do have sales members um, nationally here at Herman. This shows your regions. If you want to take a look at that and give them a call, they would be absolutely happy to help you. And Brian, we thank you for coming in. That was the demo was great. We appreciate that. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And we'll talk to you soon. Hope you uh, join us for another Herman webinar in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Stacey. Thank you.